Hello everyone, I'm back with another crazy theory of mine. Do you remember the scene where Tyrion says that he will give Harrenhal to Littlefinger and he says that it is cursed? What's in it for me? Harrenhal. Harrenhal is cursed. This curse prevents any lord from holding Harrenhal indefinitely. We know that's true because it has been proven again and again over the years. Ever since Harren the Black built Harrenhal, many houses like Coharis, Harrowway, Towers, Strong, Lothstone, Went, Lannister, The Mountain, Bolton, etc. have taken over Harrenhal. None of them had been able to hold it for long. Littlefinger also avoided taking a seat at Harrenhal. I'll read a couple of lines from the books between Sansa and Littlefinger in short. Joffrey gave you Harrenhal. You are lord in your own right there. I declare that you shall be granted the castle of Harrenhal. You honor me beyond words, your grace. What a castle it is. Cavernous halls and ruined towers. Ghosts and draughts. Ruinous to heat, impossible to garrison. And there's that small matter of a curse. Curses are only in songs and stories. Has someone made a song about Gregor Clegane dying of a poisoned spear thrust? Or about the sword before him, whose limbs Sir Gregor removed a joint at a time? That one took the castle from Sir Emery Lodge, who received it from Lord Hyvon. A bear killed one, your dwarf the other. Lady Went has died as well, I hear. Lothstones, Strongs, Harroways. Harren Hall has withered every hand to touch it. As you can see, even Little Finger was scared of the curse. Did you ever wonder who put the curse on Harren Hall? I have a theory about it. Unlike my other theory videos where I reveal my crazy theory in the end, I'll reveal it right here because I want you to know where my thoughts are going when I explain my theory. You might remember how in my Stark Blood video I compared the magic in the walls of Winterfell and said that it is similar to the curse of Harren Hall? Yes, you guessed it right. I think the green men or the children of the forest who are living in the Isle of Faces were the ones who put the curse on Harren Hall. We know they are still alive because Sir Adam Valerian and Howland Reed had met them. I'll post my theory for why Howland Reed went to see the green men next week. I'll also post a top 10 video soon. Make sure to subscribe my channel and also click on the bell next to it so that you won't miss it. Anyways, to understand this theory completely, we need to take a look at Harrenhal and the Riverlands history. At first, I thought the curse was cast when Harrenhal was built because no one has been able to hold it since it was made. I thought they cast the curse because along with the reason that the children wanted to stay hidden in the Isle of Faces, they were also mad because King Harren had cut down thousands of years old weirwoods to use in his castle. The pact signed at the Isle of Faces also involved that the first men won't cut down the weirwood trees any more than they already had. But then, when I started looking into it, I found out that it goes all the way back to the Andals. Harrenhor or Harren the Black had built Harrenhal on the north shore of the Godsai Lake. Harren's grandfather Harwin Hor was the king of the Iron Islands who took the Riverlands from Arak Durandan. Arak was the last storm king to rule the Riverlands which was conquered by his ancestor Arlan Durandan III who in turn had taken it from House Teague. Before that, House Jasmine was founded right after the Andals had invaded Westeros and had ruled as the king of the Tridents. So you can see this pattern didn't just start with Harren Hall. It went all the way back till the Andals invasion, but not before it. So here's my theory. After the signing of the pact in the Isle of Faces, where the first men and the children decided to live peacefully, the order of the green men were created. According to the pact, the children retained the standing forests and the first men got the open lands like the coastland, high plains, bright meadows, mountains and bogs, etc. The order of the green men were appointed to keep the Isle of the Faces safe after the signing of the pact. The signing of the pact marked the end of the dawn age and the beginning of the age of heroes. It marked 4000 years of friendship between the men and the children. The pact endured all through the Age of Heroes, the Long Night, and the birth of the Seven Kingdoms until the Andal invasion. When the Andals invaded Westeros, 
They burnt out the weirwood groves, hacked down the faces, and slaughtered the children of the forest that they came across. Everywhere they proclaimed the triumph of the seven over the old gods. A hill now known to the Westerosi as High Heart was sacred to the children of the forest. There, the Andal king Eric the Kinslayer cut down the children's grove of 31 weirwoods. It is said that the first man killed half the children of the forest with bronze blades and the Andals finished the job with iron. So you can see why the green men living in the Isle of Faces must have felt afraid by the Andals. Why they could have felt like they needed to take drastic steps to keep those people from coming to the Isle of Faces and doing the same to them. In order to prevent this from happening to them, I believe they not only cursed Harren Hall, where the heart tree's face is full of hatred, but they also cursed or put some kind of magic spell all around the God's Eye. The surroundings of God's Eye seem to have seen many bloody battles, like the battle by the lake shore, Butcher's Ball, Daemon Targaryen and Aemon's battle above the God's Eye during the Dance of Dragons, where both the dragons and the dragon riders had died. A lot of people died in all these battles. They always seemed occupied with something or another and didn't have time to even think of going to the Isle of Faces. In the Mystery Night of the Duncan X series, Ned the ferryman didn't like crossing the lake at night. The town near God's Eye, Whitewall, was also destroyed. The town on the southern shore where Yorin had decided to stay the night and to cross the God's Eye next day to Heron Town was burned down by Amory Lodge and his men. That was where Arya had saved Jacken's life. The curse on Heron Hall was definitely the worst, but the magic around the shore of the God's Eye wasn't that strong because Sir Duncan the Tall had crossed the God's Eye before. Sir Adam Valerian had flown to the Isle of Faces to seek counsel from the Green Men during the Dance of Dragons, and Howland Reed had went to meet them and had stayed with them through the winter before going to the tourney of Heron Hall. When I was rereading The Clash of Kings, I found a lot more evidences which proved my Stark Blood theory. I'll explain them all in my Howland Reed video. Someone in the book said that the wolves had grown bolder than ever around the God's Eye. It would make sense if there are still children of the forest or even the dire wolves living in the Isle of Faces. Maybe Namiria can sense them and that made her bolder? What do you think about Heron Hall's curse? Do you think it's real or is it just a wet nurse tale to scare the children? And if it's real, who do you think cursed Heron Hall? And does this mean that Littlefinger's days are numbered? Okay, so it's time for the crazy theory shout out. I have to say I was surprised by so many awesome theories and it was really hard to pick one. So I'll give a shout out to two theories. I also loved a theory on which I'll make a separate video soon. So the first shout out goes to Jesse Johnson who said this about the statues in the crypts of Winterfell. The sword bear across their laps is them denying guest rights. That's what that means to meet or be met by a lord who has his sword bear across his lap like Rob and Tyrion when he stopped by on his way from the wall. Maybe Bran the Builder did hide something in the crypts and that's why only a Stark is welcomed there. That's why someone who is not a Stark feels uneasy in the crypts. You can read the whole theory in the Jack and Hagar video's comments. I really loved this theory. The second theory I would like to give a shout out to is by Sean Kilaki, who said, Maybe Littlefinger did bring Jack and Hagar to King's Landing to discuss not only killing but doing it in a way that would benefit Baratheon and Westeros. So after Jack and arrives in King's Landing, he poses as Sirio. He meets Ned and becomes Arya's trainer. He escapes Sir Marintrant and uses disguise to escape with Yorin. So these were the shoutouts for this week. If you also have any crazy theories, use hashtag crazy theory and then write your theory in the comments. If I like your theory and you convince me enough, I'll give it a shout out in my next video. So what do you think of these theories? Don't forget to tell us in the comments. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, share the video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye bye. See you in my next video.